Let's talk about Doom. Doom. Oh, lovely Doom. Doom is actually. I have no right to say this. You re- re- well, you are in the process of re- reviewing the game. There's a review in progress up on GameSpot. The review will be out later today. It's, later today. Okay. We are putting the finishing touches on all the components that comprise a GameSpot review. Can you tell us a score right now? I t- <laughs> Would you fire me? <laughs> <laughs> no. I think. I mean. I think you could probably tell where where you're landing. Well, you're you like it. Yeah, I'm very positive on the game. Okay. Yeah. No. Hooray! Uh, yeah. It. it uh, <laughs> I didn't know how I felt about Doom going into it. The E3 presentation that focused so much on mm. glory kills to me was a huge red flag. And so going into this review, I that was sort of the biggest question I needed answered. And it almost immediately, I realized that like, no, these are fine. And everything around it is way more awesome than I expected. Because mm. I thought maybe the focus was in the wrong place, right? right yeah. But it's not. And uh, it's Doom is, is just a crazy over the top, just overwhelming experience like it's it's nuts everything's on fire everything is screaming <laughs> everything is exploding there's blood everywhere and that's and that sounds like maybe a really cheap way to make a game exciting but like the way that it's paced and delivered to you is just so well and with such an attitude an unapologetic attitude about what it is and where it comes from yeah and i i was just super happy to realize that this i remember playing doom as a kid I feel the same way today I did back then. Isn't that bizarre? And you're not the only person that said that. I completely agree. I know uh, Brad at Giant Bomb had the same feelings. Ben, same for you as well? Yeah, I mean, for me, I mean, it, it's excess is beautiful. Mm. Like everything from everything Pete says to the, the metal guitar sound. I mean, it is the, we've said this a lot, but it's the most metal game that's ever been made. <laughs> it, I mean, it, it really makes is. you want to raise devil horns <laughs> oh and just God. kind of bang your head it to really it. It really is. Yeah, um, but... <laughs> But it, it, there's also like a, a beauty, it, despite all this excess, it's also got this beautiful simplicity to it, mm. which really encapsulates what it is that made you fall in love with Doom in the first place. And we were talking about this the other day. You know, Doom 3, I, I like Doom 3 a great deal, but mm. it never felt like Doom to me. Yeah, you, it, it felt said- almost like a survival horror game. Right, yeah, right? yeah. Um, this perfectly translates what it was or what my memories and feelings are from playing those many, many hours of Doom and Doom 2 to to the 21st century, yeah. you know, it it, it it totally captures, and I, I, it's almost reductive, I think, to say old school or old right. fashioned, because I, I think that would imply it's some kind of retro experience, mm. and it doesn't feel like a retro experience. It it does encapsulate what it, those feelings you have from playing classic Doom, but it doesn't do it in a way that feels nostalgic or retro. It, yeah. it, it does it in a in a very sort of yeah. modern package. Yeah, it's it, it looks great. It sounds incredible. Um, and it has a lot of things peppered into it, little systems, right, that are like modern touches, things that we find in modern games that weren't present in Doom hmm. that I think make it uh, an experience that we can look not, not just refer to as retro. Like it feels modern, but it delivers that same thing that made that, that experience back then so great, which really kicked off a genre. Mm. You know, I mean, shooters weren't really that big of a thing before Doom. Yeah, I mean, we talk about Wolfenstein as obviously one of the first ones. Yeah, Not the but first, yeah, but, but Doom was the one that like really just went, oh. That caught on. Yeah, people just yeah. stood up and listened. What's, yeah. what's weird about Doom is that if you were to ask me like two weeks ago, what was a Doom game and what I would want in a Doom game, I would like talk about stuff like, I don't know, atmosphere and like interesting enemies and interesting weapons which were kind of all things that were covered in Doom 3, much for muchness. Um, But the weird thing about this Doom is that I was playing this and I was realizing the things about the original games that I actually did like Mm -hmm. that were in this that I'd totally forgotten about. Things like, like the effect of wandering around and being lost and looking at that weird map and trying to find where the secrets are, yeah. which is like how they made that fun in a 2016 game is like beyond me. And uh, like even looking for yellow keys and red keys. And I mean, that became a joke about yeah. bad level design for years and years about how to artificially. Yeah. You know, and they, and they put it out there and they do, yeah, and they do it, but they do it in job. a way that it never feels boring to me. The only stuff that didn't work for me is there's, Obviously, one of the big things they introduce here is verticality. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of mantling and jumping up ledges, and there are some sections which sort of resort to pseudo platforming stuff, mm. where you have to sort of negotiate your way up a little maze of of, of shelves. Yeah, um, and it, that stuff didn't doesn't quite work. I mean, yeah. I think the mantling's super fun when you're doing it in combat mm. because the verticality in combat is great because you've got demons coming from above and below you mm. in some cases. 
But the, the straight up platforming stuff is the only thing I didn't really enjoy in the game and got a little bit tedious. They, they expand on that a lot. You start to end up doing like side strafe jumping and stuff based on. Yeah, especially like, if you go into like the rune challenges. Right, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you got any of the, the time based platforming ones yet. Not yet. Ugh. Jump maps. They're back. <laughs> like even down to stuff like. I totally forgot that in Doom 1 and 2, like red barrel placement was like in, totally important oh, yeah. for like trying to clear out rooms and they're so, everywhere in and this they're well. everywhere in yeah. fact to the point where you have to stay the hell away from them because yeah. you'll just get insta killed like yeah. basically from but that whole thing about like exploding do you remember that like you can see the animation in your head when there's like a pinky or a, a, a an imp coming towards you and you set off the thing the red barrel and it explodes and you see them move slightly to the side yeah. and just burst into blood <laughs> yeah exactly right <laughs> that's <laughs> a very good impression Pete. <laughs> you. like you, it's got that feeling to it where you're like you're just detonating death all over the place yeah and it's yeah like I for a game that has gone from pillar to post and had such a long and weird development history it's so strange that this game has such a strong identity yeah like it knows what it is it's so pure it's so straightforward and it doesn't mask the fact that you are basically walking from arena to arena right you enter a room they say oh there's demons we gotta lock it down until you kill them all <laughs> you do that you move on and it's just like you just want the next one to happen like yeah. that that's really all it is uh, but the way that they you know a lot of the maps are designed are, are intricate enough and challenging enough, like packed with demons that really push you to limit. Um, and you're constantly scrambling for new resources. Like it's that, it's that tension, that anxiety. Like I'm white knuckled, wide eyed, staring at my TV, like <laughs> yeah. telling my girlfriend like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, yeah. you know? You're like, yeah. again. Oh, the, yeah. The, the way it, it's not, it has such confidence in its combat mm. to make the combat the star. And it doesn't try, yeah. it doesn't have loads of cutscenes. And they, they could have done a real Wolfenstein. I love Wolfenstein, but mm. they could have put on a lot of more campaign and story and characters. But they really, they, they, they're they not afraid just to make it about the combat. Mm. You know, and the, the, the glory kills and the chainsaw are the cherry on top. Because yes. the way that changes the gameplay yeah. and turns it into a beautiful rhythmic thing... Mm. Uh, where where those things, you know, the executions and the chainsaws, which I think when we all saw that demo back at E3, yeah. the glory kills, it's like, oh, th th that, totally. that just feels like it slows it all down. I haven't seen a game mechanic have such a, like, 180 reaction in my yeah. life, where it's like, I, it looked like, oh, God, they're putting contextual kills in Doom to... Oh, this is actually this like solved the medipack hunt problem that would not work in 2016. Oh, but, oh, but, it, but it plays so well, like and beyond just trying to get that health, right? Like, so I'm facing down an enemy, I'm I'm losing health. Mm. I have like no ammo. I'm loading everything I have into them. Like, please stagger, please stagger, please stagger. <laughs> they stagger, and I sprint in and just tear them open, and I'm like, I'm back. And anyway, <laughs> yeah, <right. yeah. laughs> it's just like let's go. And like, chainsaw is the same thing, right? You're yeah. super limited on fuel, yeah. and you'll save that fuel until you see a big enemy. It's going to take a lot of your fuel to right. take down on right. the insta kill, right. but you know it's going to top up all your ammo yeah so like the, there's all this undermining underlying strategy going on in your br brain which, yeah. which didn't exist before the chainsaw was just a fun weapon to slice people yeah. open with right it was like a joke um, almost yeah um so all of those things they've made actually meaningful and part of what you're doing again it's sort of you know making it all about the combat mm. you know and that it, it takes it back to that feeling you're alone you're you, you know there there is little bits of story elements there if you want to find them and there you know there are also some additional secret stuff which unlocks you know like a an appendices kind of thing yeah which but i actually quite like i think those are written there's good yeah, stuff in, in there right well. i mean but you don't <laughs> it, you don't need to look at no. it, right? You the know. way it tells its story, though, is really like quite what well. the fact that you break out of like a stone sarcophagus, a sarcophagus yeah, and then like your bloody doom like armor, a bloody is, pentagram on the right? ground, and, yeah. and like the hell talks about you as the do the doom slayer. Like yeah. it's like the idea of like deifying this ridiculous character who didn't really even have a name in the original games. Yeah, um, let's talk about I guess some of the other uh, um, maybe shortcomings it might have like yeah. have you dabbled with some of the other modes actually like the multiplayer stuff snap map and yeah before we get to that i mean i i will say like the campaign delivers so many great things but it does lack a lot of variety right um there because you know it's doom you go to hell yeah. sorry i blew it <laughs> <laughs> you go to hell and you go to mars and you go back and forth to hell to mars to hell to mars to hell to mars and that gets pretty rote right that bothered me but the game does find its footing again later on in the campaign so that was fine it resolved itself the multiplayer stuff is is very very basic it captures sort of part of the combat that makes doom so special but it doesn't give you the the odds the sort of like the crushing looming odds that mm. you face when you enter an arena in the campaign i feel like i'm playing halo right yeah just with a little bit of satanic dressing from time yeah. to time yeah it feels like a game you've played already yeah. yeah like it's fine yeah but it's 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 not the sort of thing where i'm gonna talk about it with anyone i'm not gonna bring that up 
that's not the topic of discussion. Mm. What about the snap map stuff? Uh, it, they actually, so I think that's pretty cool. The, the tutorials are, uh, are pretty straightforward. They teach you how to do everything within a matter of minutes. I was able to just move stuff around, place it, take it out, put it back in, undo things. Um, there's a lot of room there to be creative. They let mm. you do things like, you know, uh, tailor the text that appears on screen in different parts of the environment and different parts of a mission. Uh, you can use logic in interesting ways to have different objects, uh, activate things. Um, and some of the stuff that the community's done is is pretty good for a game that's only been out a handful of days. Mm. Uh, it, it seems to me the thing that the community will really run with down the road. And for a game that has at its core the ability to deliver something that the campaign does, I'm hoping the community can also build upon that. Yeah. Right? I mean, talk about mods, like Doom can have those within the game. And I, I cannot wait to yeah, see you how You already saw out. some pretty dumb stuff when you were uh, like, the, there's, yeah, there's the, the big stuff. piano. Yeah, there's like a big, there's like a music room. There was a, like, was there a one with like a drum sequencer or something. Yeah, that yeah, was, yeah. yeah. I had yeah. a cowbell in the corner. I mean, you can, you can never really tell how much that stuff's been made by it ahead of time. Sure. Right. Uh, I guess, but uh, yeah, you'd hope so. And like, I imagine, I'm not sure if I asked Marty this when he was in two weeks ago, but I imagine you could do some sort of cross platform stuff because Snap Map is just a tool, right? So, if somebody made something on PlayStation 4, yeah, what's the stop them from being Can they talk about that PC. during E3? Can you, can you do it across platform? Probably. I thought, right? Maybe I'm mixing it up with so there's only So there's basically one Snapchat. I mean, Hopefully. when you log into Snapchat, it does close the game and reboot into Snapchat. Yeah, it right? does for so multiplayer as well. Snap map. Snap map. Oh, yeah. So Snapchat? Snapchat? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They've, they've included Snapchat in, <laughs> in Doom. Here's, uh, here's the Funky Town level I yeah. played as well. Oh, yeah. yeah, Funky Town's playing on this disco. So, yeah, I agree. That's the, that's the, right, <laughs> level, that's the right level of dumb yeah. right there. Um, yeah, it's, I, I guess we'll, you know, P Peter's point is totally right. We'll see it's, it lives or dies on what the community does. Right. So we'll have to wait and see. Be cool though. Hopefully if it's cross platform, then the pool of creations then is shared and that will be, you know, hopefully everyone gets to enjoy the spoils of the, the good stuff that's made. Uh, yeah. Do when's the review up later today. Cool. I mean, yeah, we're literally just polishing it. All right. It's really not. You're sat here. <laughs> Shut Someone up, else ben. is doing a job. <laughs> He's just lighting the last candles and <laughs> placing the last bloody skulls yeah. on the review. Uh, all right. So, yeah, check back on gamespot.com to see uh, Peter's review for Doom.